All referencing systems require writers to provide information about the sources they use. This tutorial will provide further information and examples for the Vancouver referencing style. This tutorial is based on a National Library of Medicine publication entitled Citing Medicine, the NLM Style Guide for Authors, Editors and Publishers, 2nd edition. Vancouver is a numbered referencing system. This means that citation numbers are used to indicate where information from outside sources has been used in the text. At ACU, Vancouver is used by the Biomedical Sciences. For an in-text citation, you will insert a citation number at the end of the phrase or sentence where information from an outside source has been included. This is all you require for paraphrases, but for direct quotations you also need the page numbers. The examples in these materials have been formatted with round brackets, but square brackets or superscript numbers are also acceptable. Just be sure that you select one format and use it all the way through your assignment. Paraphrases are an effective method of incorporating information into your writing, because you demonstrate a deeper level of understanding when you explain ideas and put them into your own words. Paraphrases require a citation number, but no page number. Direct quotation means that you have taken information directly, word for word, from the original source. Use them sparingly in your writing. Short quotations, less than four lines long, are placed in quotation marks. Longer quotations than this are not encouraged. You will need to provide page numbers following the citation number for a direct quote. Here are some examples for both paraphrases and quotations and the necessary in-text citations. The first examples are information prominent citations. These are more common in medical writing. Author prominent citations, where the author's name is mentioned in the sentence, are less common. Note that you will refer to authors only by their last name when you use author prominent citations. These guidelines for multiple authors apply to all sources. For author prominent citations, when a source has two authors, include the last names of both authors. For more than three authors, provide only the last name of the first author followed by et al. in the reference list. For fewer than seven authors, always provide all author last names and initials. For more than seven authors, provide the first six authors last names and initials followed by et al. You may find a source in which one author summarizes the ideas of another. If you are using this information in your text, you will have to acknowledge both the author of the original source and the author of the source you have read. Secondary sources are typically used when the original source is not readily available and they should be used sparingly in academic writing. In this example, you have read Bateman and Jones and they summarize Wiggins' ideas in their writing. You will only include the source you have actually read in your reference list, in this case Bateman and Jones. Your reference list should contain all sources you have cited as either quotes or paraphrases throughout your assignments. Make sure you do not include sources you have not cited in your assignment. You should start your reference list on a separate page and title it References. Your sources will be listed in the same numerical order as they appear in your text and each source will have only one entry in the list. The entries in the list will be single spaced with a blank line between each entry. Have a look at this sample reference list formatted in Vancouver style. The introduction to the Vancouver referencing system document on the ASU LEO site contains examples of entry list formats for different types of sources. This presentation provided a general overview of the Vancouver referencing system. Use this together with other Vancouver materials provided on this LEO site. Please note, your lecturer and unit outline will always take precedence over the information in this presentation. Carefully read your unit outlines for any specific requirements and check with your lecturer if you have questions about their requirements.